Hello, test, 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 test. Yep, all right, perfect. All right.
evening, everyone, and welcome to Wayne Valley High School in Wayne, New Jersey, as champion athletes, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies bring you Garden State HSWrestling.com's live coverage of the NJSIAA Rothman Orthopedics North One Group Three Sectional Final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians. I am your host, Shane Dunn, and with me on the call is James Clark. James, this was a very unexpected one today. How are we feeling going into it? I think unexpected is probably an understatement here. Let's take a look at these two teams. Montville, you know, first year head coach of Ka uh, Brian Caprell in his first year, upset the number one seed of Old Japan, beating them 42 to 21. Then they went on the next round and beat Wayne Hills 33 to 25, and they won back to back titles in 2019 and 2020. Then you look at the home team of Wayne uh, Valley Indians. Coach Schroeder in his 10th year, 165 and 80 in his entire career, also upset a really high seed at Riverdale, who were the number two seed, 31 to 25, and then they beat Sparta, who was the sixth seed, and they beat them 30 to 23, and looking for their first title since 2014. And first time a seven and eight seed will be, for the first time, in a sexual title. So this will be a really, really interesting night. Someone's gonna make it tonight to Friday night, but we'll just find out who it is as soon as this is over. And this is a very wacky matchup. This is the pineapple pizza of possible sectional finals. I mean, we've never seen a seven seed take on an eight seed before. I mean, this is unprecedented. Wayne Valley was not expecting having anything going on Wednesday. I got here early. There's a girls basketball practice running until like almost five. And I mean, I love the wacky ones. I like the ones where it's not expected. I wasn't expecting to commentate the Indians versus the Mustangs today, but I'm happy to be here, and I'm excited for a really good matchup. It's definitely going to be a great match, one for the, for the years and one for the books for sure. Absolutely. Now we're seeing them do the handshakes and weigh-ins, but while we do that, why don't you tell them a little bit where they can find us and our sponsors and stuff like that? Be sure to follow us on social media, on Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, on Twitter, GardenStateHSW, and on Instagram, GardenStateHSWrestling. Also, be sure to also hit that like button on our live stream, and also hit the subscribe button for all of your wrestling needs that we have provided here this season. Your teams, your counties, your site, GardenStateHSWrestling.com is where it's at. We provide the best wrestling coverage in the state of New Jersey, that is for sure. And we'll be heading into this matchup really quick. I'd also like to let you know, if you want to become a sponsor today, here's how. Do you own a local business? Become a sponsor. Sponsorship opportunities available for team pages and live stream coverage. How do I become a sponsor? Learn more. Look for the Your Logo Here button on your team's page or email admin at GardenStateHSWrestling.com. And we'll be... Action will be starting in a minute. We'll have the national anthem starting up after we do the handshakes here and the team captains come out. But not many times, especially in high school sports where you get to commentate something historic. I mean, 7-8 seed, this is the equivalent of like a 15 and 16 seed in March Madness. This is, you don't see two underdogs, two Davids face each other often, but that's exactly what this is. Oh, 100%. I mean, it's not every day when you see a number one seed and a number two seed get upset like that, but it just goes to show you that wrestling is one of those sports that you never know what's going to happen when the matchups come up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. I actually um, I haven't gotten to talk about much. We have a little bit of dead time. So I've been making videos about my commentating stuff and Montville was my first video I made, so the whole team, I mean, I just want to give a very big thank you to Montville. I mean, everyone came up to me beforehand. Every, I was talking with all of them, and we were just kind of kicking it back, and it was awesome. Montville is a really nice and respectful group of young men, and I couldn't have been happier walking in this gym. I mean, it's a, it's a weird job. Not many people know what we're doing on the side, so to get recognized, especially like the thank yous and stuff, it's very nice, so I love Montville, and I've been to Wayne Valley too, another very respectful group of young gentlemen over there. Expecting a huge matchup today, and I'm expect I'm hoping it's a toss-up. I'm hoping this goes to the absolute last weight class. I'm very excited, but we'll be back with you guys after the national anthem in just a second.
and we're off. I love the energy in this gym right now, James. I won't lie. This is, aw this is an awesome scene behind us going on. It's definitely going to be an exciting match tonight for sure as we have the coin flip going on here. We'll be starting at 1.32 today, but before that, today's broadcast presented by Champion Athletes Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HSWrestling.com's wrestling coverage. We'd also like to thank Montville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you the North One Group Three sectional final. We would also like to thank Howard's Mets Radiant Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James DeZow, Neil's Pizza, Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, Wayne Valley Dental Care, and the Bagel Stop providing financial support for this season to allow Garden State HSWrestling.com's broadcast for today's match. We will have the names for you in just a moment, but I mean it. This is the loudest gym I've commentated in. I can barely hear myself talk. You're going to hear me yelling for most of this. Here at and we're pounds. set. Here's 132. We have Montville in the green and yellow trim. And we have the Wayne Valley Indians in the navy blue with the white trim on them. And the match is underway. as both wrestlers are feeling each other out. As we have some both wrestlers have this is, some head fighting there. This is Cole Perry for Wayne Valley and Tyler Longo for Montville. So this looks like this will be a really good matchup. Definitely a lot of aggression there, but gonna get some injury time there. Wow, and uh, behind us is actually the Montville student section, so you're gonna be hearing a lot of them tonight, I have a feeling, And um, but we have a blood timeout. In the meantime, let's go to social media and talk about where you can follow us. GardenStateHSWrestling.com, your teams, your counties, your site. Follow us on social media, GardenStateHSWrestling.com on Facebook, GardenStateHSW on X, and GardenStateHSWrestling on Instagram. We're back in the action. Minute four seconds left in the first period here. Definitely seeing a lot of hand fighting for both of these wrestlers for sure. They know exactly what's at stake tonight between these two. You know, when you see a one seed and a two seed, it's kind of expected. So a seven, eight seed, this is just gonna be fringe wrestling throughout. And I couldn't ask for anything more. And we'll get some stoppage right there to just make sure we fix up on the head gear. I mean, the Stangs came in here very, very loud and very proud as well. I mean, you can see the head games may be working already in the first period of this match. Now we have some continuation of some hand fighting. Leaning on that arm there is Perry. Along like with trying to defend off of that. Still just pushing against each other on the side. Not Nobody in clear up. control just yet. Head snap there from Longo. Not willing to give up an inch. Now short time left in the first period. It's looking like we will head into the second with a goose egg on the board for both gentlemen. So 0-0 zero, zero tie here and Perry's gonna go bottom right away which is definitely the smart move. That's something that a lot of wrestling coaches definitely try to stress the factor of. If a score is all tied up at zero and no one scores yet, take the bottom position. Absolutely, and doing a great job on top is Longo from Montville. Great wrist control with that left wrist. 
I'm telling you, I think we're going to be competing with the Montville student section for most of the night tonight. Well, they're definitely bringing in the crowd, that's for sure, and that's always good. I mean, this is, a, this is like history being made here tonight. It's not like history. This is history for us. I mean, this is a fun one. But I'm telling you, we're gonna be we're gonna be yelling over them all night. And it's I'm I'm happy about it. I love passion. I love I love pride from a student section, and not not the loudest in wrestling everywhere I go. When I commentated football or basketball, it was always the entire school showed up. But seeing this kind of, kind of turnout for Montville is beautiful. I mean, student section packed well, we'll to the gills behind me. A mat return, but instead. He's going to let up the escape, and Perry leads this one 1-0 one over Longo of Montville. Now so Perry, Perry on the board first. Perry with a 1-0 lead, like you mentioned before. Oh, wow, pin attempt here, maybe. Maybe something might happen there. And we should be near the takedown, and that gives him the takedown, and that's going to extend the lead to 3-0 after that takedown. So Longo needs to be the aggressor here. We still have another... 35 seconds left in this period, and then another two minutes in the third. As they continue Great. to work with each other here. Great job trying to rotate around there from Perry. But now might get a stall and call, not too much action going on. But now Perry trying to throw in a half here, rotates around. 10 seconds left, can Perry escape with a three nothing lead in the second period? Or will Longo be able to close the deficit? And he gets away, gets the point with buzzer beating point there. It's three to one going into the third. That is a huge point right there for Longo. So we're gonna go ahead. That's gonna be some injury time there. So let's talk about our social media. Be sure to follow us on social media, on Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, on Twitter, GardenStateHSW, on Instagram, GardenStateHSWrestling. Also be sure to hit that like button down below on the stream, and also be sure to hit the subscribe button for all of your wrestling needs. Do you own a local business? Well, become a sponsor. So do you like what you see today? Are you looking for a way to advertise your business to customers? We have limited sponsorship opportunities left for the 2023-24 season. You can sponsor one of our live streams or a local team page. Just click on a blank ad logo and fill out the sponsor form. Let GoHeadAndStateHSWrestling.com make you the star of the show. And we're going to get ourselves back into the action here with Shane Dunn and James Clark on the call here at Wayne Valley High School covering to you the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians. Cole Perry for the Indians on top. Longo for Montville on the bottom. Another half attempt here from Perry. And we saw Perry dominate the majority of that second period except for the last two seconds where he let the neutral escape and point there for um, and that very well could be the difference maker in this matchup you just never know i mean getting that point right there coaches always stress the fact do not give up that escape point but perry looking for an arm bar see if he can try to run it here he's got plenty of time he leads it three to one he doesn't want to rush anything to make a crucial mistake for himself or his team but now he's running it there and he's got the half Nelson thrown in, just has to be careful that he doesn't get caught there with a potentially dangerous, as the official's doing a good job looking in to make sure that that arm is straight. 108 to go here in the third, and off to a great tight start here in the 132 pound matchup, starting off this sectional final. It's definitely been good so far in this period. Perry doing a good job riding out so far. 50 seconds left to go in the third. He leads it three to one. And Longo not showing much signs of uh, defense from the bottom. He's kind of just being tossed around, which, I mean, it's taking a lot of effort out of Perry to do all this offense. Longo just needs one shot and one chance to capitalize, and I believe he will. Now 34 seconds to go here in the third. Perry will be on top, Longo on bottom. Mustang crowd behind me getting involved. And we'll see if Perry can do it to clinch this first matchup here for the Indians. But now we're gonna get the escape there. Eighteen seconds to go here in the third. We'll see. Can Longo get an escape and possibly a takedown to win, or will Perry cruise to victory here with the last 10 seconds, and Perry is in the driver's seat?
Looking to get that. And there you go, 3-1 there for Perry. He leads this one. And now that puts Wayne Valley on the board right now as they lead this one. Three to nothing over the Montville Mustangs. Before we get into the 138 matchup, today's broadcast is presented by Champion Athletes Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HS Wrestling.com's wrestling coverage. Heading into 138, and I'll get the names for you in just a second. James, if you want to, wow, I can't even think. They're loud tonight. And I'll get the names for you in just a second. So here we go. We're here at 138 pounds right here. Wayne Valley leads this one three to nothing over Montville after that nice three one decisive win there from Perry of Wayne Valley. So we're continuing on here. This is Zembowski for Montville versus Ndaki of Wayne Valley. Have should those be, names up for you in just a second. Should be a really good matchup right here. And gets that take down there, leads it now two to nothing. Now see if he could try to run something with that. See if he could try to run something with that. Now see if he could get a tilt there. Nice job by him getting that tilt. And that's going to be a two count right there. That'll be a two count. And now we're going to... Names sh should be good on the screen now. This is Indaki for Wayne Valley. Dembowski for Montville. Apologize for the mistake there before. I think we should be able... This is two back points there, so it's four to nothing. Wayne Valley's come out here and done a great job to start off both matches so far. Oh, absolutely they have, 100%. And now Perry... or Not Perry, Zendaki trying to get some more offense going from the top position here. Now rolls him over, goes for a pin attempt there. Just a little awkward, didn't catch quite all of it right there. Greasy defense there from Dembowski of Montville. Great defense from him. Turns around, 10 seconds now in the, fir in the first period. We'll try to see if we can get something run from there. Now he has that arm bar. He might try to, to get a tilt there yet again. And that's going to be at the end of one period as he leads this one four to nothing. Brilliant start there by Zindaki of Wayne Valley. It's going to be a defer, and he is looking to choose bottom to start the second period with a four nothing lead. Good choice there, just trying to give himself the best opportunity to get more points. Only way that Dembowski can get points from his position, I believe, is back points, correct? Because he can't perform a takedown already on top. So this puts Zendaki in the perfect position to make his lead a little bit bigger. And he will if he can just get separation here. Got to see if he could try to get something out of it. Try to get the escape right there, but nothing new in there. The official says that he still has control on that one. Minute 32 left to go in the second period. A great job there from Dembowski. Starts it right all the way over 132 in the second, like you mentioned. Dembowski will be on top, Zendaki on bottom once again. A great burst attempt to get out of there from Zendaki before. But now just lets him up. It is 5 nothing. Zendaki for Wayne Valley leads. And after that escape point, which is a great, that's a crucial one right there. See if he could try to get that takedown. He has a single leg, got up on top, now makes it 7 to nothing. 
That was absolutely a beautiful takedown. That was as textbook as it gets there from Zendaki. Oh, 100%. You don't, it's not any other way of how you could explain how that takedown was. It was slick. So now giving up the escape, it's now 7-1. to one. Zendaki needs to make sure that he gets the takedown here, try to put himself in major decision territory. Absolutely. 48 seconds to go now, and Zendaki, this hand fight has been great in the middle. But I would say Zendaki's takedowns are a little bit more advanced than Dembowski's would be. And that's where we're seeing Zendaki uh, kind of shine here. But the hand fight has been very even. The ground game has been very even. But once again, another beautiful takedown there for Zendaki. Makes it 9-1 to and puts him in major decision territory. And getting that takedown right now in major decision territory is Zendaki. Leads it now 9-1. to 15 seconds left to go in the second period. Now trying to pin him here with short time. Isn't, might not be able to get it, two seconds left. And that is the end of the second period. We'll head into the third, it is a nine to one lead for Noah Zindaki of the Wayne Valley Indians. Dembowski from Montville in the green and gold. Try to get the neutral position here, see if we can get a takedown to start the third. And a shot attempt there. And nice job by counterfeiting that one is Sindaki. Now makes it 11 to 1. 20 seconds gone now. And this is now not even major decision territory. This is heading into tech territory here if, if um, Zendaki can just get a few more takedowns. Yeah, or at least try to work for some back points here. If he could get like a set of like three back points, like here would be 14 1 and get another three, it could be a tech fall right there. But you never know, things could happen. But Zendaki doing a really good job of leading this one. He has that bonus point victory right now, or at least at the moment he does. And that's very crucial in this kind of matchup right here. Couldn't have said better myself. Halfway through the third period now, still an 11 to one lead. And Zendaki is trying to work this into a pin. See if he could try to run something here. 50 seconds left to go in the third. And Zendaki has done a brilliant job so far. The home seven seed Indians are off to a great start in the first two matches, an awkward roll there. And they're off the mat with 34 seconds left to go in the third. They'll meet back in the middle. Zendaki on top, Dembowski on bottom. Doing a really good job in this one. 34 seconds left to go. See if we could have tried to do with that one. Now, now cradle he's... attempt potentially here. Nope, goes for the ankle pick instead. He breaks down that ankle, just make sure that he could see if he could try to roll him here, but nothing's really doing here as, you know, been doing a really good job here. 15 seconds left to go. If things work out in their favor, Zendaki's going to walk away with 11 to 1 major decision, which is crucial for Wayne Valley. But at the end of the day, you never know, could be a win for Montville at the end of the day. Absolutely. And we were kind of joking about that beforehand about not letting a pin up is still definitely a win. They will now go up 7 to nothing, the Indians. But before our next match, today's broadcast presented by Champion Athlete Sports Nutrition. Apex Wrestling School and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsor of the original Garden State HSWrestling.com's wrestling coverage. Heading into 144, a 7-0 lead here for Wayne Valley. And were you expecting a start like this for the Indians? We are here at Wayne Valley High School covering to the, you the North 1 Group 3 sectional final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians with your commentators on the call, Shane Dunn and James Clark. We are here at 144 pounds with a seven nothing lead for Wayne Valley over Montville at the moment after two bouts. And we're gonna try to see what happens here at 144. Montville definitely is gonna want to get 
a win here for sure to kind of get some kind of momentum going, but doing a good job of defending that. See if he can try to spin around that. He's in that near side cradle position, and he gets near it, and he gets that takedown, and he leads this one two to nothing. What I miss? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Back to the action here, a minute left to go in the first period of the 144 matchup. This is Say for Wayne Valley and Marino for Montville. So this should be a really good matchup right there, seeing these two for sure. And I do have to give the Montville student section some credit. I really thought they were going to be reading the names out loud. They're not, so I've been going to them for all of the Montville wrestlers coming out. A big uh, thank you to them for that. And he was trying to lock up a cradle there, but nothing doing there for him. And correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first lead uh, Mustang has had here tonight. So I believe it was 2 nothing the first one, then he got the escape point in the third and ended 3-1. The other one, it was like a 7 nothing lead for Wayne Valley to start, so this is our first lead from Marino of Montville. I mean, it's definitely been all Wayne Valley so far, but right now in this bout, Montville definitely taking advantage of this, and that's going to be the end of one period. We have a 2-0 lead right now for Marino of Montville over Desai of Wayne Valley. So it's going to be, going to be his choice. And we're going to go neutral. Interesting right there. Kind of surprised by that one. And we're starting the second off. Say for Wayne Valley in the uh, blue and white. Marino for Montville in the green, gold, and white. 2-0 lead for Marino has built a great dominating first round for him. Now we have a lot of hand fighting going on here between both of the wrestlers. Great job avoiding the takedown attempt there for Say. And Montville is loud. My God, they are in my ear this entire night. And I might be deaf by the end, but a great single and leg turns into a cradle. Could be a pin attempt here. Oh, and he got spot. the takedown at least, but no back points were given. He only gave a one swipe, and that was all. So no back points given there. Extends the lead now, 4 nothing after that takedown, but looked like he could have put, put him in some danger right there. Absolutely. I think both of them could have been pinned at any point while they were in that, in the peak of their, they were just flipping around there. If one of them could have capitalized on it, it would have been a pin right then and there. But now we're seeing Marino for Montville dominate so far. Now we're going to try to get to the other. We're going to get to the center of the mat here yet again. We'll try to break him down if we can, but nothing doing there for him. Marino doing a really good job. See if he could try to run the R bar instead of a cradle. We'll see if he could be successful with it, but nothing doing there for him. 25 seconds to go now in the second. Still a 4 0 lead here for Marino. But nothing doing there. Great job, though, by Desai to make sure that he doesn't give up any kind of an inch. But he tried a Gramby right there. But, you know, see if he could try to get some spark going. But he wasn't able to do anything with it. And, I mean, as a previous wrestler yourself, tell me what a loud high school crowd like this talking at every competitor on the mat I mean, this is an away match for Montville, but they really came out. So how do those head games affect a wrestler personally? I mean, the sport of wrestling is hard to begin with, right? So, you know, you kind of just take it as, it as it's worth. You go in there, you wrestle your match, you go hard six minutes. You know, win or lose, you wrestle six minutes. And that's the best kind of workout and the best thing that a coach can ask of you. So... You know, that's definitely what these coaches are telling their wrestlers tonight. Like, listen, you know, try to win big by getting the pins and lose small by giving up a decision. Give up that takedown right there for Marino. Extends the lead now to 6 nothing. 
I couldn't hear you. <laughs> they said it best. We can't hear you. I couldn't hear you on that one. Gosh, this Montville crowd is too loud for my liking at this point. We got sat right next to him. Absolutely, 100%. But uh, yeah, from, from playing sports myself, a few different ones, especially basketball, the crowd, whether it was on your side or against you, always, you could feel it. It always made a difference. And uh, this is a very intense environment for the Indians as well as the Mustangs. So this is, uh, this is about as good as it gets, aside from like states. Oh, 100%. I'm not going to try and talk while they do chants. They're doing a really good job so far. Montville trying to make up for the deficit here. They're leading this one. Marina leads this one over to Sai. Six to one. Under a minute left to go in the third period. Marino doing a great job controlling Sai so far. Six to one lead. Anything can happen here, but Marino may even get to walk out of here with a major decision now which would be huge for the Mustangs. A seven nothing lead is built for the Indians, but that can be taken away just as fast as it got there. 35 seconds now. I mean, if he definitely wants to walk away with a major decision, he needs to be able to get a quick takedown, let him up and get a quick takedown to secure it. So he needs to start working something quick if that's something that he's looking for. And Joe Marino looking for the first win of the day here. He might just have it. But we may see Say try and throw the kitchen sink at him here. 10 seconds to go. And that's going to be a Marino win. Wins at 6 to 1. It's going to put Montville on the board as they trail this one 7 to 3. Today's broadcast is presented by Champion Athlete Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HSWrestling.com's wrestling coverage. We would also like to thank Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James Dizow, Neil's Pizza, Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, and the Wayne Valley Dental Care and the Bagel Stop for providing financial support this season to allow Garden State HSWrestling.com's broadcast of today's match. I am Shane Dunn. I'm here with James Clark. James, very fun first three matches so far. Definitely. And it's only just getting started, so we'll find out what happens here as we're now at 150 pounds here between at the North 1 Group 3 sectional final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians. So we are here at 150 pounds after three bouts. Wayne Valley is currently leading this one. It is seven to three. So this will be another really important matchup right here between Wayne Valley and Montville. Definitely needing to get another Montville win. Any win is gonna definitely be crucial in this matchup. Getting a nice double leg takedown there, but not enough separation to be able to finish it as it was blocked off. We'll see if he could try to spin behind, but overpowering, nice takedown, leads it now two to nothing. This is Adam Suze for Wayne Valley and Ells Ellsmore, should be Ellsworth for Montville. Let me double check that. So this will definitely be a really good toss up matchup here that both coaches definitely want. Now we'll try to see if we can try to get something from behind, but good job with staying behind him, trying to ride out. Now trying to work to the side, he's just gonna cut him. Now make it two to one. Two to one lead here, get some separation. Nice job getting that takedown. Leads this one now four to one. Is Ellsmore for Montville. 16 seconds now to go here in the first four to one lead for Suze of Wayne Valley. Suze definitely needs to make sure he wrestles aggressive here. Don't give up any last second escape points or reversals, anything of that nature. 
And that's going to be the end of one period. Suze leads this one 4-1 to one after one period. It's going to be El Ellsmore's choice. He's going to defer. Suze is going to go. He's going to go bottom. We'll start with Suze on bottom here. Ellsmore on top. And, and now I'm hearing Wayne Valley's crowd get a little more into it. And now a big roll there from Suze, a great job. And he might be able to capitalize here, gets the neutral point, makes it five to one. And now he's near that near side cradle. He'll finish it for a takedown, extends it now seven to one. It, at the cusp of the major decision territory, he's gonna cut him. And they're gonna go out of bounds seven to two now. Suze leads this one over Ellsmore. And Suze, an absolutely great sequence there. That was beautiful by him. And I mean, it sucked the life out of the Montville student section as well. You heard them go from yelling to silent by one move from Suze. That was beautiful job by him. Still have some hand fighting going on here. Neither wrestler not willing to give up an inch. Staring each other down. Had just all of a sudden turned into a chess match. And yeah, the momentum in this match definitely just kind of halted. Both just kind of restarted the match almost halfway through the second. You don't see that every day. And has that ankle trapped, finishing it up to a double leg. And Suze getting that takedown, nine to two. We're still at regular decision. 40 seconds left to go in the second period. And you see the frustration building on Ellsmore's face. Suze, a very talented wrestler. I've definitely gotten to commentate for him in the past. But Ellsmore, frustration's building, just trying to get something going against Suze here. And an escape there for Ellsmore makes it 9-3. to three. Makes it now. It's 9-3. to three. 15 seconds left to go in the second period. Now three seconds to go here. It's looking like this will end nine to three. The end of the second will go to the start of the third in just a second. Wayne Valley leads seven to three overall. Suze for Wayne Valley leads nine to three over Ellsmore in this matchup. And Suze would start on top, now takes the neutral start instead. So we'll get a neutral start here between both the wrestlers. Suze of Wayne Valley and Ellsmore of Montville. Shane Dunn and James Clark on the call. Not willing to give up an inch either wrestler. Grabbing onto those wrists is Ellsmore. Now see, now we got a stall warning in the first one of the night and in this bout on Ellsmore and getting that takedown, finishing it is Suze. And finishing it up again, getting that takedown. It's going to lead it now, 13 to 5. We're at major decision territory. Suze kind of looking up at the clock, just making sure that he understands what's going on. Now, just a minute to go here in the third. 13 to 6 lead here for Suze. And this has been quite the third period here. And now, getting into those penetration steps is. Ellsmore definitely trying to be the aggressor of this match here. He's trailing at 13 to six, but definitely does not want to give up the bonus point victory. So he has to make sure that he stays aggressive and wrestles defensively here. 35 seconds to go here. And Ellsmore needs a pin to win this matchup. Now finishing up on that one. Nothing doing there for them. 20 seconds to go in the third. We got another stall point there. It's going to be rewarded to Suze in officially at this moment in major decision territory. 12 seconds to go and finishing up on that takedown. And that's going to solidify it as Suze is going to walk away with this one in a major decision 16 to 6 over Ellsmore of Montville. And that's going to extend the lead to 11 to 3 for the Indians to lead over the Mustangs. We'll be heading into the 157 so, bout next. So be sure to follow us on social media. 
Follow us on social media, on Facebook, GuardsAHSWrestling.com, on Twitter, GuardsAHSW, and on Instagram, GuardsAHSWrestling. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the like button for all of your uh, all of your needs, your team, your county, your site. Do you own a local business? Become a sponsor today. So, do you like what you see today? Are you looking for a way to advertise your business to customers? We have limited sponsorship opportunities left for the 2023-24 season. You can sponsor one of our live streams or a local team page. Just click on a blank ad logo and fill out the sponsor form. Let GardenCHSWrestling.com make you the star of the show. We are here at 157 pounds here in the North 1 Group 3 sectional final between the Mumfield Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians here at Wayne Valley High School. Your commentators on the call, Shane Dunn and James Clark. And our other team, Donald J. Brower, is covering the Group 5 sectional matchup there between two rivals of Clifton and PCTI. That match is being held at PCTI High School. So if you wanted to check out that matchup right there, definitely go ahead and do so. It looks like a really good matchup so far between those two teams. I'm sure Don's having a blast over there. Over here we got Al Kardali, the senior for Wayne Valley, and Fala for Montville. I mean, think of the situation for a senior like um, Al Kardali. They haven't had a title since 2014, so in his time, he's kind of just been, I wouldn't say losing, but definitely not at the pinnacle the peak achievement for his school. As a seven seed walking in here, your senior year, probably not expecting to go to the finals and host a match, especially hosting one. That was the craziest part, I think, for Wayne Valley to believe. But think about the situation for Al Qadar, Al Qadar Kardali. I apologize for that one. In such a big moment for his career here. Oh, 100%. Absolutely. And I. Wayne Valley always such a solid wrestling team in their own right, too, as their rivals of Wayne Hills. We're still tied here at zero. 25 seconds left to go in the first period. The official just telling them to just keep wrestling to the middle there. 18 seconds to go now. And Rafet from Wayne Valley definitely doing a really good job trying to finish up on that takedown there from Fala of Montville. Now short time, and it's looking like we'll be heading into the second with a goose egg on the board for both gentlemen, 0-0. Zero, zero. It's going to be Rafet's choice. He's going to go bottom to start the second period. We would like to take the time to thank the Montville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you this North 1 Group 3 sectional final. Starting the second, still no points across the board. Now a single leg attempt here from Fala. And Fala gets the first takedown of this matchup. Not just yet, sorry for the jump there. Not calling two points yet. Because of the wrist control from Al Qadari here, a great job by him, and that is one point for Al Qadari. And sorry, it wouldn't have been a takedown before. Al Qadari almost escaped before, and then uh, Fala just took him down a second time. So that's where that the two point confusion was coming from. Oh yeah, definitely. And I mean, you heard the whole student section behind me yelling too. So it wasn't wasn't just me on that one. That's my apologies, everybody. One nothing lead here for Al Qadar Cardali of Wayne Valley. He leads it one nothing. We have a minute left to go in the second period. But Fala having some other ideas as he's trying to get a takedown of his own, but spin around behind it. And that was, so we're going to get some injury time right there. And while we're there, don't forget to follow us on social media, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, your teams, your counties, your site. Follow us on Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com. On Twitter or X, whatever you're calling it nowadays, GardenStateHSW. And on Instagram, at GardenStateHSWrestling. Also, do you own a local business? Become a sponsor today. Sponsorship opportunities available for team pages and live stream coverage. 
How do I become a sponsor? Learn more, you ask. Great question. Look for the Your Logo Here button on your team's page or email at admin at gardenstatehswrestling.com. Still have the blood time here waiting on that one. We would also like to thank Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James Dizal, Neil's Pizza, Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, Wayne Valley Dental Care, and the Bagel Shop for providing financial support this season to allow Garden State HS Wrestling.com's broadcast of today's match. Still a 1 0 lead here for Al Cardali. And we're going to get some stoppage right there. And the ref just wants to see the mat getting wiped or maybe the back uh, part of the jersey getting, or jersey, part of the singlet rather for Fala to get wiped off here. Yeah, they're definitely just going to wipe that one off a little bit, just make sure everything is all cleaned up and ready to go before and he goes in. Yeah, something must have just... I mean, I rarely see that where I'll see the blood time, but I feel like they usually get that figured out then. I've never seen a wrestler still covered in the blood afterwards. Big single leg attempt here by Al Cardali. And he gets him down, a two point takedown, makes it a three nothing lead for him and the Wayne Valley Indians. But now, he was trying to look for a tilt there, but was not in really a proper position, otherwise he could have caught himself in a very dangerous situation, but we're under 10 seconds left to go in the second. And he's doing a really good job is him. And that brings us to the end of the second, a three nothing lead for Al Cardali for the Indians. And we'll see what Fala can do, only down eight points. Not too big of a deal yet, nothing to worry about yet. I think this is only our fourth or fifth match into the contest, but, and I apologize for any um, obscenities just heard there from the crowd there. But we're starting the third. We apologize for that, Garden State HS Wrestling. Mics are a little sensitive today. Crowd behind us a little loud. You're gonna catch some strays there, and I apologize for that. But, and Fala gets that escape now. It's three to one now for Al Kadali of Wayne Valley. So all he has to do is just hold on for dear life. And even if he could counterfeit off of a takedown that is taken by Fala, you know, never know what could happen here. But it's three to one. It's a tight matchup here right now. We're 35 seconds into the third period. And Fala needs to be the aggressor here. Trying to hear what the ref's saying there. Uh, definitely a warning was just vocalized to Al Cardali. Not exactly sure why. Um, looked like, and I could be completely wrong. This is just me saying what I'm seeing. Looked like he almost smacked the ankle of Follow there. And the ref said something to him. He heard the crowd exclaim a little bit. Haven't seen that one before in my days. But just under a minute here in the third period, still 3-1 lead for Al Cardali. And getting in on that shot there is Al Cardali. Cardali. And he's finishing up on that takedown, but blocking it off there is Fowler. Look it up at the clock, making sure he doesn't. But he's gonna give up that takedown extensively now to five to one. We're gonna get some, is this some injury time there? This is an injury timeout for Wayne Valley here while we wait. Follow us on social media, GardenStateHSWrestling.com. Your teams, your counties, your site. Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com. On Twitter or X. Garden State HSW and on Instagram, Garden State HS Wrestling. You find more exclusive content there. You will see an interview from either me or James with the winning coach as well as one of the wrestlers here today. And James, help me out a little bit here before we go to the sponsors. Uh, I just saw the ref throw up a big X in the middle. That means to cut the blood time. Got it, okay. Cut, cut blood time, cut, cut injury time, cut to any of that kind of time. So that means we're back, not enough time. But if you do want to become a lo or sponsor, or you look for a way to advertise your business customers, we have limited sponsorship opportunities left for the 23-24 season. Sponsor one of our live streams or a local team page. Just click on a blank ad logo and fill out the sponsor form. Let GardenStateHSWrestling.com make you the star of the show. Speaking of stars, Al Cardali still in the lead here, now five to one, and it's looking like he's gonna exit with another minor decision here for the Wayne Valley Indians. 
and what a start for them. I mean, they're definitely the seven seed and uh, Monville's the eight seed, so they're definitely favored here. But I mean, it's a close matchup. I wasn't expecting such a lead to break out for the Indians here. But that'll bring us to the end of the 157 bout. Al Kardali, the senior for Wayne Valley, a win there, and we'll be heading into the 165 next. But before that, today's broadcast was presented by Champion Athletes, Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HSWrestling.com's wrestling coverage. We'd also like to thank Montville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you this North One Group Three sectional file final. And we would also like to thank Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James DeZau, Neil's Pizza, Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, Wayne Valley Dental Care, and the Bagel Stop providing financial support this season to allow Garden State HSWrestling.com's broadcast of today's match. We are here at Wayne Valley High School covering to you the Wayne Valley Indians versus the Montville Mustangs for this North One Group 3 sectional final with your commentators on the call, Shane Dunn and James Clark. We are here at 165 pounds. Wayne Valley leads this one 14-3. Doing a really good job here tonight. Also, our other team is at PCTI covering the North One Group 5 sectional final between Clifton and PCTI there uh, with Donald J. Brower on the call and and Sean Walker of Lakeland. So if you guys want to be able to tune into that matchup right there, please do. The current score for that match right now is 22 to 10. PCTI leads that one over Clifton at the moment. Hoping our good friend Donald Brower is having a, a blast over there. Just as we are here at the 165 bout, this is senior Barone for Wayne Valley and Gaber for Montville here. And again, a special shout out to the Montville student section for helping me out with all these names. Just over halfway through the first period here. And Nick Barone, definitely one of those wrestlers for Wayne Valley. You know that he's one of your anchors for this team here. You know, you expect them. He might be favored on paper to win and probably could get you like a uh, you know bonus point victory here but you never know what will happen with Gaber but Barone definitely one of the greatest one of the best wrestlers for this Wayne Valley team this year as Gaber is in in a front headlock position and they're going to go out of bounds we're going to go right back to the center of the map we're back in the middle 37 we'll seconds to go 0-0 zero, zero matchup here still We'll get a reset here. As both wrestlers stare each other down just a little bit, a little bit of some hand fighting going on and just staring each other down. Neither one's really taking any shots as of late, except as I say that now, Gaber got in on that one. 10 seconds left to go in the first period. Doing a really good job here, both wrestlers keeping this one tight and after one period we're going to go into the second we have a scoreless first period it's going to be Gaber's choice looking like he's going to take advantage we're going to go bottom to start the second period and I've noticed a lot of these matches tonight we've seen a lot of these matches kind of go into the second period you know being scoreless and that just goes to shows you the competitiveness between these two teams and why they deserve to be here today and a great recovery there by Gaber, by the way. I don't see, I see a lot of wrestlers trip and slip and fall, just like he did there. I have never seen someone get up that quick and that emphatically. He was right ready to go, still got the neutral point, and now leads 1-0 over Barone of Wayne Valley. And the second time we've seen a Montville wrestler have a lead here tonight, and the last time that resulted in three points overall in a minor decision victory. So we'll see if history can repeat itself here. Minute 21 to go here in the second. And they're just staring each other down. Barone trailing this one. Gabriel leads it one to nothing. Just got a lot of hand fighting going on there between both of the wrestlers. Some head Barone. fight. Barone. One of the more talented wrestlers on the squad, four years on the team now, senior. 
has some, done some really good things this year for his Wayne Valley Indians team. And Barone went in on a shot of his own and good job by Gaber blocking that one off. 40 seconds to go now in the second period. And Barone definitely wrestling conservatively here. He understands what's at stake right now. They're under 30 seconds in the second. Doing a really good job here, making sure they're not willing to give up an inch. Barone went for a single leg there and just missed it. And uh, as you mentioned, wrestling conservatively, and you see a lot of people won't do what they normally, they won't do their normal routine. They'll, they're very amped up, the nerves are there, like just like right now. Would you say wrestling conservatively helped you or more affected you in big matches like now? I think it just really depends. I mean, I wasn't a very good wrestler to begin with. I, I say that over and over again a lot of times. I wasn't the greatest wrestler, and our team never really wrestled in like these biggest stages. So for me, yeah, I think when you get in like these kind of positions for any team like we're seeing right now, absolutely. I mean, it definitely does help. Um, but aggression and being able to show initiate action always definitely helps in the sport of wrestling too because it just gets things started. And as we say that, Brown gets an escape for himself here. We're all tied up at one. Tied up at one apiece. 140 to go now. We could, could potentially go into a... Overtime, if I'm not jinxing anything, could go into overtime, first one of the night. <laughs> I mean, I'm hoping for it. I'm, uh, but I don't get paid by the hour. I just like wrestling, but <laughs> it doesn't really matter if it's overtime to me, but I'd like to see this one. This has been very back and forth, a lot of hand fights. Minute 16 to go now. And this is one of those weight classes when you get to the middle weights and you get up to the upper weights where you're gonna see not a lot of shots being taken. You're gonna see a lot of conservative and defensive wrestling. And this is like the beginning part of what you're gonna be seeing as we have a minute left to go in the third period. And you saw the frustration there from Barone, clapped his hands together after missing that takedown. And it's like both these wrestlers just prepared for the test. Like they are ready for everything the other one has, both only getting escape points so far and now 40 seconds to go, and I don't know if you might have jinxed it, but we might be getting overtime here. That's just my knowledge of wrestling. Been around it for a long time. So you get to learn as, as you go along. And now Barone getting in, has that single leg, and gonna finish it off. He'll get that takedown. Leads it three to one, 20 seconds left to go in the third. Nice job by him, and that was Oh, well, that was probably one of the best double leg takedowns that we've seen all year against the HS Wrestling. One of the best I've gotten the pleasure to call, and that might end the match. You see Montville in absolute shock. You saw Wayne Valley's gym just absolutely jump up there, and you see Barone with the big celebration. Very happy man right there, and a great win for the senior for the Indians. That will make it. 21 to three if I'm not mistaken, but before the next match, 175, today's broadcast presented by Champion Athlete Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HSWrestling.com's wrestling coverage. We'd also like to thank Montville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you this North One Group Three sectional final. James, take them away on the 175 match starting up here. Absolutely. 175 pounds now, we are here at Wayne Valley High School covering to you the North One Group Three sectional final between the Wayne Valley Indians and the Montville Mustangs. Shane Dunn and James Clark on the call. We are here at 175. Wayne Valley leads this one over Montville. It is 17 to three. And a stall warning there already which is something that you don't always see very often. Might get another one there any second, and yeah, absolutely. That definitely came in extremely, extremely early right there, but if you're not showing the initiated, initiating any kind of action, that will happen. So it's a one nothing lead here already. And you don't see that all the time with a uh, start there, starting off one nothing in a mask, but this is Chim Chimelski 
for Montville versus Javier of Wayne Valley. Or sorry, Chemileski. Chemileski. We and him talked about it before he sounded it out for me. I'm hoping I'm getting that right. If not, I apologize. I'm trying my best on that one. We are a minute of the way through here. We already have a one nothing lead after that stall call there for Javer of Wayne Valley. Definitely wants to try to initiate some action going on here. 45 as, seconds to go here in the first. As you can see, both uh, wrestlers have their knee braces on there. You can see one has it on their right knee, which is Javer, and one on the left knee for Chimileski. And, and Chimileski going to get in. Caught a takedown. Leads it 2-1. to one. That was a beautiful reversal by Chimileski there. Chimileski there. Oh, my gosh. Chimileski. And apologies. Could be 15 looking. seconds to go. He might get our first pin of the night here if he's lucky. I was going to say, he could be looking for some more, but nothing doing there for him. we got five seconds left to go. We're going to have Chimileski leads this one two to one. Three seconds left to go in the first. We'll see what Chimileski can do here in this last three seconds of the first period, if anything. And yep, not sure what was going on there. It looked like he was going over to his coaches to kind of hear what they were saying, but we're gonna get back to the center of the mat here. Get set here. And after one period, Tim Leski leads this one. It's two to one over Jaber, Wayne Valley. Jaber's gonna defer. He's looking over to his coaches. He's going neutral. The coach indicated neutral, and that's where he's going. Always listen to your coaches in terms of where, what position you're going to go into. A little surprised by that call personally. But yeah. Two, but two to one lead, and I mean, this is the sectional finals. The coach is going to know best. I like the, there's no confusion. There's no asking. He just went neutral right away to the ref. I mean, that was a great job by him. And we'll see. Oh, they're going off. off the mat. And it was close there. And uh, I've had to go up to that stat girl over there for every name. So them slamming through that table would have really shut down our operation there. <laughs> right over there where they would have slammed into is where I'm getting all the Wayne Valley names from. Still 2-1 to one here for Chimileski. Happy they're keeping it on the mat. But doing a really good job there. And we'll see if it pays off for him going neutral. I'm a bit surprised that he didn't go bottom, but again, it's the coaches they know, and they definitely want to take the aggression on to try to really push the pace of the match. They're already trailing 17-3. You know, got to go for it. It's, it's the end-all, be-all right here, right now. And Chaver got a takedown there. Moffill, the Moffill coaches over there, Looking like they want to be able to talk about this one. Want to have some discussion on that one there. That one, I think they want to have the discussion to make sure that it was in bounds, or at least the both feet were in bounds. They're going to talk it over just to make sure they do that. But while we're doing that, follow us on social media, on Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, on Twitter, GardenStateHSW, and on Instagram, GardenStateHSWrestling. Also, be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button on our YouTube stream for all of your wrestling needs, your teams, your counties, your site. GardenStateHSWrestling.com is where it's at. And now we're going to get back into the action after having a quick discussion over there for, for the coach. Now a little bit of confusion here. It's going Heard to be them. a caution on, it's going to be a caution there on Chimileski because he did move right before the whistle. And we've seen uh, Chimileski and the, the referee that you can see in frame right there. I've had a lot of conversations thus far. And they're going to get a locked hands call. Oh, oh. And that. And we're back. And one point for locked hands. For so, so he's going to be rewarded with the point. 
Javer, uh, Chmielewski's gonna be rewarded with the point. And uh, you might catch me muting it a little bit more for the uh, back half of this matchup. We actually had all of Montville's student section breathing down our neck there, yelling into the microphone there, very close to us. So, um, yeah. So they're just having some discussion to ensure the score is correct. So it is three to three. Yes, that is correct. But now he's indicating the neutral. He wants to cut him. And now the score is going to make a four to three after cutting him. So now we'll make it four to three. And what an odd start thus far. This is a weirder match than most. Well, that locked hands call definitely is a, is what really could cost them if they don't win this bout right here for Wayne Valley. It could start something big, but huge move there by Javer. Could be the first pin of the night for Wayne Valley. At least they're very well near it. They're gonna get it. Huge pin there for Wayne Valley. That's gonna extend the lead now. It is now 23 to 3 here where the Indians are leading over the Mustangs. Great job by them. Today's broadcast is presented by Champion Athlete Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HSWrestling.com's wrestling coverage. We'd also like to thank Montville and Wayne Valley. Booster Clubs providing financial support to help us bring in the North 1 Group 3 sectional final. What a pin there. The first pin of the night so far. And a 23-3 lead grows for the Indians. James, we're in the 190 matchup now. 100%, 190 pounds here. We are here at Wayne Valley High School covering to you the Wayne Valley Indians versus the Montville Mustangs with their commentators on the call, Shane Dunn and James Clark. We like to take the time to thank the, our live stream sponsors for tonight, and they are the following. Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James Zowell, Neal's Pizza, Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, Wayne Valley Dental Care, and the Bagel Stop for providing financial support this season to allow GuardsHSWrestling.com's broadcast of tonight's match. We also like to take the time to thank Montville and the Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you this North 1 Group 3 sectional final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians. Right now this is Sean Vandalinda for the Indians and Kramer for Montville. And uh, Vandalinda, a wrestler I have gotten to interview in the past, a huge two point takedown for him there. Very talented wrestler here for Wayne Valley. Oh, absolutely. We definitely have covered him quite a few times this year. I know we covered them at uh, the Wayne Valley, Wayne Hills matchup there early, real early in the season. And then we were also watching them as well, too, when we saw them at uh, the PCTs, kind of keeping an eye on him, too. We have 30 seconds left to go in the first period. But Wayne Valley right now looking like they're in the driver's seat right now. We still got a long ways to go. We still have 190 pounds. We're just about midway through. Vandalinda leading this one. It's two to zero right now over Kramer of Montville. We're not gonna get anything there. And that's gonna be the end of one period where Vandalinda is gonna lead this one two nothing over Kramer of Montville. And Kramer's going to defer. Vandalinda going over to his coaches, indicating bottom. Always a coach's favorite. Absolutely. And Vandalinda up 2 nothing. And this is really where Montville has to start putting on the gas, no breaks. This is where they need to start taking. They're down 20 points now overall. They have just a couple weight classes left. Still enough where this is not even close to over. But if Montville wants to come back, they need to do it now, and that's not how they're gonna do it. A four nothing lead breaks out for Vandalinda. And an injury time getting called there by Montville's wrestler, and you saw he kind of landed flat. While we have that injury time, follow us on social media, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, your teams, your counties, your site. You can find us on Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, 
Twitter, at Garden State HSW, or X, whatever you want to call it. You'll see a lot of our match results and other stuff like that, announcing where we're going, schedule, all that. And Instagram, Garden State HS Wrestling. You'll see post-match interviews from myself and James Clark. You'll see Donald Brower's post-match interviews from PCTI tonight. And also, if you're looking for the PCTI sectional final and you somehow accidentally stumble, stumbled across the Wayne Valley one, no worries. Just check out our YouTube channel right now live. You can see the PCTI sectional finals. It's right over there, hosted by Donald Brower. And also, if you'd like to become a sponsor, do you own a local business? Become a sponsor. Sponsorship opportunities are available. We have limited sponsorship opportunities left for the 23-24 season. However, you can sponsor one of our live streams or a local team page. Just click on a blank ad logo and fill out the sponsor form. Let GardenStateHSWrestling.com make you the star of the show. Vandalinda gets right back to it against Kramer. Injury time's over. I think he just had a bit of an odd landing there. Fort nothing lead here for Vandalinda. Now trying to see what he could work on there. Vandalinda been the aggressor thus far. This is Dominic Kramer from Montville, or Dom Kramer at least for Montville. Sean Vandalinda for Wayne Valley. Fifty seconds to go here in the second period of the 190 pound matchup. Now 40 seconds to go. And they call a stalling there, stall warning at the very least on Vandalinda. And my apologies, it was on Vandalinda there. And now back to the action here. A big flip there from Kramer. Gets his first points of the match, makes it four to two. What a reversal there from Kramer. Used all of Vandalinda's momentum to get that one. 20 seconds left in the second, and this just the entire uh, perplexion of the match just changed right there. One move, one mistake by Vandalinda there. Oh, and that definitely could be a changer right there, but he definitely needs to make sure that he gets himself back into the match here. But getting that escape right at the end there, maybe. So maintaining control. That's going to be the escape right there for Vandalinda, which was the right call because they were separation between the two. So it's going to make it now 5 to 2 here. Follow us on social media, on Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, on Twitter, GardenStateHSW, and on Instagram, GardenStateHSWrestling. We're going to get ourselves back into the action. Vandalinda looking like he's going to cover. He is going to cut him, now make it 5-3. to three. And including this one, we got seven matchups remaining here. Start at 132. We're going to end off at 126 here today. Just looking a little bit ahead to the future, but this matchup has been a great one. We've seen Vandalinda have the momentum, lose it, and then gain it right back before the period even ended. But still only a two-point lead for him there, and a great, great job there from Kramer evading that takedown. It definitely makes a big difference right there. That's why... I'm the Montville coaches were just telling Kramer to just cut him, get a takedown. You got two minutes to work. Let's try to tie this thing up, try to get some points here. So that was really, really crucial right there. Some minute, that 10 seconds left in this matchup. We'll see if Kramer can capitalize, try and tie this up. And this one, knock on wood, could be heading to overtime as well. Unless we get a takedown here. We have a minute left to go, so still plenty of time. I mean, Kramer definitely needs to make sure they do. Uh, and getting that takedown right there is going to be Vandalinda. Extends the lead now 7-3 to after that headlock attempt there by Kramer. And now 42 seconds to go here in the third period. Makes it 7-3 to for Vandalinda. And Kramer 
You can see the frustration, everything building. Got to see if he can capitalize and come back with this short time. I mean, that's just really been the biggest difference right there. It's just how they've been giving up, like, these crucial takedowns in any given moment. That's, like, the toughest thing that we've been seeing tonight. 15 seconds now. Vandalinda's looking like he's going to win another one. This will be still a minor decision here for the Indians, and let, barring something crazy in these last six seconds. And trying to, a Peterson roll there was Kramer, but not going to have enough time. Vandalinda extends the lead. It's now 26 to 3 for the Wayne Valley Indians over the Montville Mustangs so far. Today's broadcast presented by Champion Athletes Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HSWrestling.com's wrestling coverage. I'd also like to thank Montville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support, help us bring you this North One Group Three sectional final. We would like to thank Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James DeZow, Neil's Pizza, Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, Wayne Valley Dental Care, and the Bagel Stop for providing financial support this season to allow Garden State HSWrestling.com's broadcast today's match. We are in the 215 matchup here. We are here at 215 here at Wayne Valley High School bringing you the North one, group three, sectional final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians with your commentators on the call, Shane Dunn and James Clark. We are here at 215 pounds. Wayne Valley's leading this one 26 to three over the Montville Mustangs at the moment. Still have some weight classes left to go. We started here tonight at 132 pounds. We still have, you know, this bout right here, one, 215, we have 285. 106, 113, 120, and 126 left. So six bouts to go. You know, Montville needs a win here. That's really the end game here is that Montville needs to start winning. And it needs to start here at 215. We have a minute left to go in the first period. We have a 0-0 tie. And we're going to get a stall warning there. 57 seconds to go here in the first of the 2.15. Just kind of give you the PCTI Clifton North 1 Group 5 sectional final uh, score right there right now. 31 to 19, that one is. PCTI leads that one. And then over here we have 26 to 3, uh, Wayne Valley leading this one over Mottville. And getting that takedown there, nice job by him is new fall of Wayne Valley getting that one. Nice job by him getting that takedown. This is Ellsmore for uh, Montville, nicknamed Pee Wee. Cradle attempt there by no fall. Under 20 seconds to go in the first period. This thing's definitely, like I was telling the viewers, it's definitely gonna be tough for Montville to come back. I mean, they kind of need to start winning, and this is definitely, you have six bouts to go. You got to start winning it here at 215. You just, you have to. Really have uh, about one more match left before this becomes pretty much over, before the lead's too big to come back from. 26 to three is no little lead. This is going to take a huge comeback from the Stangs here. We'll see if they can get it done. Still a lot of great weight class. I will say from from commentating Montville in the past, their lower weights will perform. It's really going to come down to this matchup and the 285. I could see their 106 through 121, or sorry, 120 now um, winning, honestly. And, and I could still see got it 126 back. too, don't forget. And that so. would be the end, so I'm not going to put a prediction on that one. But if they can just manage to at least – not get pinned here, or a minor decision could keep a minute, but those lower weight class in their 285 is where it's gonna come down to for this sectional final. But no fall for Wayne Valley is trying his best to keep that from happening. Now both wrestlers stands. We're gonna get the escape there, makes it two to one now. New fall leading this one over Ellsmore. We're gonna get some blood time, it looks like there. Or no, Ellsmore's just throwing the headgear back on. That was all, it just fell off right there. So it we're getting like, right back into it. It definitely looked like it was close to blood time. I was a little concerned that it was gonna be some blood time, but it's not, so. 
I just saw the ref go like this right before, so I knew it was just his headgear falling off and they had a break in the action. Need that if you're Montville. Almost capitalized off a huge mistake, but could not get it. 107 to go in the second. Definitely one of the most important matchups here right now. You're trailing at two to one right now if you're Montville. You know, definitely get any sort of win going. Get that momentum going. Get the spark going for your team. Getting that front snap there. Now Duval getting in on that takedown there. And we'll see, now trying to hip heist over is Ellsmore, but nothing doing there. And now gonna bring him right back to the mat there is Newfall, and he might get some back points there. He definitely will be getting back points. Not gonna be enough there for a pin. Well, maybe I could be wrong as I say that. Could be near the pin right there. Just needs to put a little bit more pressure on that shoulder. Stick the toes out a little bit. He could get him right there. But getting that reversal right at the end there is Ellsmore. Definitely a huge reversal getting there right at the end. And now throwing in some legs there is Ellsmore. Five seconds to go in the second period. We're going to go out of bounds. And we're going to get us right back to the center of the map. Four seconds left to go in the second period. This thing is definitely... <laughs> Definitely been entertaining. What would look like it was going to be a new fall pin ends up being only a 7-3 one after, after Ellsmore got that reversal. I was holding my breath. My jaw was dropped. That was quite the throw. And then just the scramble afterwards. And Ellsmore got one of those uh, mistakes that we were talking about capitalizing on there. Now only a four-point deficit in this matchup rather than a pinfall. But now we're heading into the third. Seven to three lead here for Newfall. Wayne Valley over Ellsmore of Montville. And we're gonna go neutral here to start the third period. We're trying to spin around that is Newfall. Great job by him. Trying to get an escape there was Ellsmore. Coaches are telling Newfoul to just new foul to just cut him. Makes it now a nine to four. Newfall leads this one over Ellsmore. This is Adam Newfall for the Indians. Minute twenty four away from just about clinching it. I mean, this is going to be really between. It's not even a decision anymore. It would almost be a pin out. At least I believe, if my math is correct. It looks like the Indians are going to have a near 30-point lead over the Mustangs. See if we could try to finish it here. Ellsmore's got a minute left to work. Running out of time there. They're going to go out of bounds. Nothing doing there. They're going to go neutral. 57 seconds left to go. We're going to get right back to the center of the map. See what Sean Ellsmore can do here in short time. Well, we're definitely going to get a lot of action, that's for sure. It's been 9-4, to four, definitely a lot of scoring, maybe not as much scoring as you normally see in these upper weights, but it's definitely been an exciting 9-4 decision here for Newfoul leading this one over Ellsmore. Wayne Valley has just kept the gas on this entirety of this matchup. 11 to four now for Newfall, and that brings us into major decision territory, if I'm not mistaken. It's still regular decision. We're so, right there, sorry. Yep, so right there, but not gonna have enough time to work for a major. He's gonna settle for the three points for his team. It's gonna be 29 to three. Wayne All right, Valley so let's it. do some math before this next matchup. There's a 26-point well, lead, five matches left. They need a, they need to pin out in four of them pretty much or, you know, two minor. I'm not doing all that, but this is do or die time for Montville, to say the least. Before we get into this heavyweight bout, today's broadcast presented by Champion Athlete Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State, hswrestling.com. So wrestling be sure coverage. to follow us on social media. Follow us on social media. On Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com. On Twitter, GardenStateHSW. 
and on Instagram, Garden State HS Wrestling. Also, be sure to hit that like button on this YouTube stream and hit the subscribe button for all of your wrestling needs. Your teams, your counties, your site, GardenStateHSWrestling.com is where it's at. We're going to get ourselves back into the action. We are here at Wayne Valley High School covering to you the North 1 Group 3 sectional final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians with your commentator on the call. Shane Dunn and James Clark. We are here at 285. Wayne Valley leads this one 29 to 3. And we're definitely going to and we're definitely going to get ourselves back into the action right there and we have some this is Diego wrestling Cruz here for the Indians and Abilio for Montville. 45 seconds gone from the first period, and this is do or tie time for Montville. This could clinch it for Wayne Valley with anything more than really a major, I guess. Yeah, I mean, anything, if you're thinking about it right now, you're at 285, you win here, and even if you pin yourself out right there, you're still going to be, you're still going to kind of be down a little bit right there. So this, this really could, this could clinch it right here. Any kind of win here at 285 could clinch it for the Wayne Valley Indians, and they'll move on to Friday. And correct me if I'm wrong, so Wayne Valley win regardless. They win this uh, sectional final today. At least I think. Just talking openly on the air here, I could be wrong. If we're wrong, Well, we're if wrong, they win this one tonight, they're going to be north one. I'm saying this 285 matchup, if, if Wayne Valley gets even a minor here, it's over for Montville. Yep, absolutely. Okay. So it's it's definitely do or die time for the Montville Mustangs here. They need to start even really realistically. You can you can probably afford to win by decision right here. If you win here by decision, you're you're it's going to be really hard to be able to come back from that. It, it, I mean, you could win it by a point. Realistically, like let's say if you win here, you know, it'll be 29 to 6. Could pin yourself, pin out you'll win 30 to 29. So it's definitely do or die time here for the Montville Mustangs. They definitely want to be able to make sure they try to end their night here and, and pull off the improbable. Montville just needs something here. Wayne Val, or sorry, rather. Yeah, Montville just needs something. They can win this match in any way and rely on their last four weight classes. Not something you want to do, but it could happen. A lot of 285 matchups are either a pin off the bat, or they go the whole distance at short points. But now, Abilio, great job, great head snap here. Now an ankle pick, possibly. Goes trying to make a cradle. Gets a head on the outside. He's got it. Big takedown there. Makes it three to nothing right there. Great job getting that takedown. For Abilio of Montville getting that takedown over Cruz of Wayne Valley. Impressive. And Cruz now, CB could try to run something here. Cruz in a tough spot here. Down three to nothing now. But now three to one. Two point deficit here. Cruz needs a takedown to tie this one up and possibly clinch a win here for Wayne Valley. Anything could happen. It's going to be tough, but anything can happen here. It's now three to one right now for Abilio of Montville. And getting that headlock, that's huge for Montville. Needs that one. That is the first pin of the night for the Montville Mustangs. 285 pounder Abilio with a great pin there. And it is electric behind me, ladies and gentlemen. We're heading into 106. Today's broadcast presented by Champion Athlete Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School and the Harrington Companies. The official sponsors of the original Garden State HS. Do you like what wrestling. you see today? Are you looking for a way to advertise your business to customers? We have limited sponsorship opportunities left for the 2023-24 season. You can sponsor one of our team page or a local or a local team page. Just click on a blank ad logo and fill out the sponsor form. Let GardenStateHSWrestling.com make you the star of the show. We are here at. Wayne Valley High School bringing you the North 1 Group 3 sectional final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians with your commentators on the call, Shane Dunn 
and James Clark, we are here at 106 right now. Remember, folks, we started here at 132 pounds. So we will be ending the night at 126 here. If Montville can pin out to win, that will be absolutely insanity for that. And Montville will advance to Friday. But any kind of win for Wayne Valley from this point on, the match will be clinched. And this is my good friend Manieri here for the Mustangs trying to play hero role. And like you said, if Holdfield just gets a minor here, this, this sectional final is over. The Indians will be your champions. But now down 20, three weight classes after this. Doing the math now as I sat back down after getting the names there. You have a little bit of room for error. And we'll see if he tries to run something here. 35 seconds left to go in the first. He has that arm trapped there, getting some back points. Could be the pin he's looking for, and he gets the pin. Man, Yeri, great win. Great win there, and keeps, keeps Montville in this one. It is now a 14-point deficit. We got three matches to go. And what a scene we're setting. Follow us on social media. Follow us on social media. On Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com. On Twitter, GardenStateHSW. And on Instagram, GardenStateHSWrestling. Also be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button on this YouTube stream for all of your wrestling needs. Your teams, your counties, your site. GardenStateHSWrestling.com is where it's at. We provide the best wrestling coverage in the state of New Jersey. There's no question about it. We would like to take the time to thank the Montville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you this North 1 Group 3 sectional final. we also like to take the time to thank our following sponsors for tonight. Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James Zazal, Neil's Pizza, Wayne, Sh Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, and Wayne Valley Dental Care in the Bagel Stop. This is a two nothing lead here for Michael Frank of Montville over Bolton of Wayne Valley here. And we have two weight classes after this. We got 120, 128 to go. And I mean, this is, this is shaping up to be a good one. What a pin attempt from Frank. Can he get it here? A great bridge from Bolton. Oh, this could be definitely something huge right there. They're getting themselves in that predicament right there. We're getting some back points there for Frank over Bolton. It will be a five point play there. If he doesn't stick him here, he's near the pin, but nothing doing there, he misses it. Gets the three back points, it'll extend the lead five to nothing. That is absolute insanity right now of how Montville is right now. The student section's alive, the fans are alive. This environment has been absolutely phenomenal to be a part of tonight. And you're only catching this on Garden State HS Wrestling. I'm Shane Dunn. With me is James Clark. We're having a blast here in Wayne Valley. And the Montville comeback right now is, I mean, this is what you see in movies. This is, this is what they write books about. This is a crazy one. Now only down 14 points with three weight classes to go. Can Michael Frank continue off of uh, Manieri's big win there? And the 285 pound matchup. We saw Abilio with a big pin. So first two pins of the match are the last two matches. This was 29 to three, maybe five minutes ago. It's 29 to 15 now. And just to give you an update right now, the PCTI versus Clifton, North one group five, sectional final just wrapped up. Clifton is gonna walk away and be a 32-31 winner over the rivals of PCTI. They were trailing by quite a bit for, for most of the match with what we've been able to see. But for them to come back to, uh, for that one and to win that one, that's absolutely insanity. Congratulations to Clifton for winning that one. Absolutely. I mean, I can say it personally, not trying to offend anyone out there, but I've seen PCTI wrestle. I wasn't expecting the Bulldogs to get it done. And I think a lot of people counted them out during that match, just like you said. And I think the Mustangs were counted out completely in this one. But this comeback, I mean, we could have two crazy sectional finals here. This has been great. Now letting him up is Michael Frank. Seven to two lead now. 
And getting that takedown, nice job by Frank getting this one. Like I said before, pin out would definitely be necessary here, but if they do win by a regular decision, it, it's it's going to be okay. It's going it's going to make things interesting. So if they win decision by here, and then they pin the next two matches, they just would have to win by one point. It would be 30 to 29 there. They need realistically two pins. Yeah, we can do the math with Tex and minors majors. They need two pins, and then they can afford to get a minor to tie it at the end there. Definitely. But Frank is looking for a lot more here, looking to not have to make it a last match resort. It's a one-point escape there from Bolton. And getting in on that take that oh, and, and slipping out on top instead is Bolton. Nice job by him for being able to do that over Frank. It's now 11 to 6, 35 seconds left to go in the second. And now we'll see if Bolton can try to do something with that. But gonna flip from behind is going to be, oh, and some back points coming there from Bolton. My goodness. It's gonna be, should be at least two back points if I'm not mistaken. I, I thought I did see him give a two swipe, but nothing doing there. Still 11 to six. Under five seconds left to go. We're gonna get a reversal. Should get a reversal and some back points. So we're gonna get a reversal. At least we'll get just a reversal. It'll be 13 to six right now. Frank leads it. Going. And I mean, what a match we're watching. I mean, like we said, they can afford one match that is a minor decision win. Then they would need two pins. Frank doesn't want to leave it down to the 120, 128 matchups. He wants to do this all by himself, help it out a as much as he can. We'll Frank now can, in a tough spot. We'll see if he can try to finish it. And slip it out on top is, was Bolton. He got the reversal. Now 13 to eight. And I wasn't even sure if he had that fully. The arm of Frank was still around that leg, but now he's fully out. 13 to eight here. We'll see what Bolton can do here. One oh eight to go here in the third. This is as tight as it gets here. Five point lead has built for Michael Frank of Montville. Looking to see what Bolton can do to try and change that. Has now been the aggressor for the back half of this third period. Definitely working something there is Bolton. Definitely battling back from this one. What looked like was gonna be a pin after getting caught in that cradle there from Frank. But now for it to be a regular decision, 13 to eight right now. Ooh. This thing is getting pretty, pretty, pretty darn close. And now Frank possibly turning the tide here. Gets him. 23 seconds to go. But now Bolton with a big, if he can get that leg around, get that wrist out, might be another two points for Bolton. And a big flip there, or an attempt at least from Frank. But here's the minor decision that the Mustangs could afford. It's gonna keep it to a regular decision. That will be fine. As long as Montville can pin out, they're okay if this is a regular decision if they win it. So, right now, 29 to 18, Wayne Valley is leading this one right now. So before we move on to the next match, let's talk about our social medias. Follow us on social media, on Facebook, GuardsHSWrestling.com, on Twitter, GuardsHSW, and on Instagram, Guard City, it's just wrestling. Also, be sure to hit that like button and hit the subscribe button for all of your wrestling needs. Do you like what you see today? Are you looking for a way to advertise your business to customers? We have limited sponsorship opportunities left for the 2023-24 season. We know it's the end of the season, but we still have some more left. You can sponsor one of our live streams or our local team page. Just click on a Blake ad logo and fill out the sponsor form. Let Guard City, just wrestling.com make you the star of the show. We are back here at Wayne Valley High School, bringing you the North One Group Three sectional final between the Montville Mustangs and the Wayne Valley Indians with your commentators on the call, 
Shane Dunn, and James Clark. We'd like to take the time to thank our sponsors for today, and they are Montville and uh, the Wantville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you this North 1 Group 3 se sectional final. We also like to take the time to thank our main live stream sponsors for tonight as well. Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinella's Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James DeZal, Neil's Pizza, Wayne Shell Tire and Auto, Wayne Valley Dental Care, and the Bagel Stop for providing financial support this season to Lock Garden State Just Wrestling.com's broadcast of tonight's match. So, the only possibility is left. Montville can get a tech and then a pin, and it would tie, or a pin out and they win. If Montville allows anything less than a tech here, it is all over Wayne Valley's sectional champions. Absolutely. That is the scene that is set here with just one match after this to go. This is the 120 pound bout. This is Ryland Jones for Montville versus Guerrero of Wayne Valley. And a tightly contested first period so far. Ryland might have him in a pinning position here. He's looking to get that cradle all the way around. So definitely Montville definitely look, looking for his bonus points here if they want to keep themselves in this match. As Shane has said, anything less than a major, anything less than a tech fall at this point is over. But he's trying to look for some more here. Started out here at 29 to three, and now we're here 29 to 18. We're gonna get to the end of the first period and Jones is gonna lead this one two to nothing going into the second period. Doesn't help too much. I mean, Jones knows for sure it's a pin. It has to be a pin. No one's going for, I mean, you're a light enough weight where you could go for a tech realistically. No one goes for techs in game deciding maneuvers unless they really have to or the other team throws out a freshman. And that is just not the case. Jones versus Guerrero here is going to most, is going to certainly decide it at least for Wayne Valley if they want to. This could end the story for Wayne Valley, make them sectional champions. And Ryland Jones has a very big chance here to become the hero for the Mustangs. And Jones looking for some other ideas, trying to sneak out from the back door. He's gonna get the reversal and makes it now four to nothing. Gotta try to work on something there. He was kind of almost near the cradle there for some back points, but we'll see what he could do. Needs to definitely work on something right there. Just definitely needs a pin. I mean, that's there's no other way to really explain it. <laughs> you really need a pin here because I think with Tech Fall, you know, you're kind of getting down to criteria. Then you're going back into the scores table and figuring out all sorts of different criteria of who's going to win the match. Well, I, nice I will say, Montville has definitely grabbed more pins than Wayne Valley. Montville has, they pinned, I think Wayne Valley has one pin tonight. I think Montville has two at They've least. They've had two pins oh. so far, Montville, and then Wayne Valley had that one pin there. So, if it came down to criteria, more than likely Wayne Valley would, uh, excuse me, Montville would most likely win it, but getting a pin right there. There's his chance. There is a chance. This is now a 29-24 match. We're heading into the 128 pound matchup. James, wow, chills, electricity is running through this gym. We might get ran over by Montville's student section if they pull this off. It is a pin or nothing scenario for Montville. Before that, today's broadcast presented by Champion Athletes, Sports Nutrition, Apex Wrestling School, and the Harrington Companies, the official sponsors of the original Garden State HS Wrestling .com's wrestling coverage. I'm your host, Shane Dunn. I'm here with James Clark. James, set the scene a little for us. It's 29-24. I mean, what a night of wrestling. It was 29-3. to This has been 21 unanswered for Montville. We're going into the 126 bout here. Absolutely insanity going on with what we're seeing. I don't think anybody saw this coming right here. It could come tonight. If Montville wins this one by pin, Montville is your, will be your one, North One Group Three sectional champions. Or if we get into a technical fall there, could potentially, unless we're 
getting deep into the scores tables and everything like that. Mopville could win it on criteria. So Wayne Valley needs to hold on for dear life and Mottville getting in. Anything short of a tech and this is all over for Montville. But a pin, a pin wins it for Montville. A tech ties it. And like we were talking about criteria, no one wants to leave it up to that. And we would have already seen if he was going for a tech, he would have done a takedown, let him up about three times the first 45 seconds. Not going to see it in a 126 matchup going for a tech. So this is a pin or nothing scenario for Rodriguez of Montville. Can he do it? Double leg attempt here. See if you could try to do something and with it. Montville's exploding behind us waiting for this one. And Janook has that leg. Can he get this one? Got the takedown right there. Janook leads this one two to nothing over Rodriguez of Montville. And if you're Rodriguez, there's nothing to worry about with just two points gone. You know it is a pin or a tech decision here there's nothing you can afford takedowns you can afford to have these things happen in the very beginning of this match but he needs to get it together before the end of this one needs a pin here to win it for Montville 7-8 seed I mean this can't get any more hectic if you tried no absolutely not it just it just absolutely cannot now James I'm not I'm not entirely sure, but with criteria, can you explain that a little bit if it were to go to a tie, for example? So if it were to go into the tie, in terms of team score, they gotta look over at the, at the scores table. We know that. So there's a lot of different criteria that could go play into it. It could go as far as pins, really here. And Montville has two, Wayne Valley has one. That Three probably, now. That probably should would probably win it for Montville if they get a tech here, just theoretically speaking. Or if it's not any of those pins, they could dig deeper and deeper into the scores table. But we're going neutral here to start the second period. We know exactly what's at stake right now. This 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 thing is definitely, I don't think anybody was saw on this. I don't think anybody saw this coming at all. Not at all. I mean, again, it was 29 to three, not even a half an hour ago. I mean, I was checking the clock, I was going, wow, this is bad. Seeing, doing the math of when it would have to be a pin-out scenario. And I did the math, and now it's looking like Montville actually has a chance to make that happen. And it comes down to Alex Rodriguez, which is funny enough, beforehand we were looking at it, and I was like, oh, we got a former Yankee on the squad for the Mustangs. It's funny how things happen. We got Alex Rodriguez fighting for a pin here, looking to win it for Montville, and this matchup, the 14th matchup of today is for the sectional championship here. Definitely so, and we'll try to see if Janak can finish it up on this takedown. He's gonna finish it up. It is four to nothing right now, under a minute to go in the second period. We're gonna get stoppage right there. And now we have a blood time while we have that going on. GardenStateHSWrestling.com, your teams, your counties, your site. Follow us on social media on Facebook at GardenStateHSWrestling.com, on Twitter or X at GardenStateHSW for all of our results and such, and on Instagram at GardenStateHSWrestling. You will see a post-match interview from the winning coach and the wrestler from this matchup right here guaranteed to be interviewed after this one is 29-24, ladies and gentlemen. But before we get back into it, if you want to sponsor us, do you own a local business, become a sponsor. Sponsorship opportunities are available for team page and live stream coverage. How do I become a sponsor or learn more? Look for the Your Logo Here button on your team's page or email admin at gardenstatehswrestling.com. We're back into the matchup. It's 126, 54.7 seconds left. If you're just joining us, first of all, you missed a great comeback thus far. But it's a 4 nothing lead here for Janook. Doesn't really matter. Rodriguez needs a pin here to win it for Montville. And with only 45 seconds left in the second, it is getting do or die time for Rodriguez.
We've got 35 seconds left to go in the second period. Under 30 now, Janak leads this one. It's four to nothing right now. That will clinch it if he does, if this win stands out here, he will definitely clinch it. Anything less than a tech is a win for Wayne Valley. A pin or a tech is a win for, or sorry, a pin is a win for Montville. Tech is not happening this late in the contest. We're gonna head into the third. Janook has a four nothing lead. Rodriguez needs a pin here in this third period to win it for Montville. And that would be their first sectional title since their back-to-back -back wins in 2019, 2020. And Wayne Valley would get their first one in a decade, not getting a title since 2014. A lot is on the line between these seven and eight seeds. This is a wild one coming down the stretch. We are in this last third period. And we need a pin out of Rodriguez if we want to see a Montville win here. We'll see if they can get it here, but Wayne Valley, Janak of Wayne Valley in control right now of Rodriguez. Gonna go ahead and get that takedown. It's six nothing right now. Minute 30 to go now. Can Rodriguez complete the comeback? Can he be the hero when needed to be stepped up? It is a five point deficit. Needs a pin to secure the win for Montville. No one saw this coming down 29 to three. It has been 21 unanswered points for the Mustangs. Can they complete a storybook comeback here in Wayne Valley? Minute 18 to go here. And Janik doing a great job from the top, not letting Rodriguez get anything going, not even giving him a chance to be in a pinnable position. Totally flattened out, he's doing a great job here. And this, I mean, it's crazy to say after so many Montville wins in a row, but this could be the clinching win for the for Wayne Valley. But now stall warning on top. And at the moment, it's not gonna really mean much or anything. Not gonna really worry about it too much, but. Correct me if I'm wrong, if he gets another one though, it would be neutral. If he was to get another stall warning like that, or no. Forget it, 43 seconds to go. I'm getting a little too excited talking a little bit too fast for my own good. We'll see, can Rodriguez complete the comeback in these last 35 seconds? It's gonna be hard, but he needs to get something going now if he wants to, but otherwise it's gonna be with the way that things are looking. Janak is gonna get this win, six nothing, and that's gonna clinch it for Wayne Valley. Even if he gets up and escape and lets him like kind of run away from him, it's not gonna matter either way. 13 seconds to go. The first shot of the match for him, Rodriguez needs a pin, eight seconds. Five seconds, needs something here. Two seconds and it's not enough for Rodriguez. It just barely ends it from goat, or from hero to goat rather. Rodriguez comes up just short. And the Wayne Valley Indians are your sectional champions for the first time in a decade. What a so be matchup. Sure. So be sure to follow us on social media. Follow us on social media, on Facebook, GardenStateHSWrestling.com, on Twitter, GardenStateHSW, on Instagram, at GardenStateHSWrestling. Also be sure to follow our YouTube page by hitting that subscribe button and hit that little like button down below for all of your wrestling needs. Your teams, your counties, your site. GardenStateHSWrestling.com is where it's at. We provide the best wrestling coverage in the state of New Jersey. Do you like what you see today? Are you looking for a way to advertise your business to customers? We have limited sponsorship opportunities left for the 2023-24 season. You can sponsor one of our live streams or a local team page. Just click on a blank ad logo and fill out the sponsor form. Let GardenStateHSWrestling.com make you the star of the show. We like to take the time to thank Montville and Wayne Valley Booster Clubs for providing financial support to help us bring you this North 1 Group 3 sectional final. And we also like to take the time to thank our uh, live stream sponsors for tonight, and they are the following. Howard's Mediterranean Cafe, Pinellas Landscaping, RAR Corporation, the law offices of James DeSile, Neil's Pizza, Wayne Shell and Tire and Auto, 
Wayne Valley Dental Care and the Bagel Stop providing financial support this season to allow Garden State HS Wrestling.com's broadcast of tonight's match. James, I mean, what did we just witness? I mean, Montville did not complete the comeback, but we see it right there. Sectional champions for the first time in a decade, the Wayne Valley, and the Wayne Valley Indians get it done. I mean, I 29 to three lead, then makes it 29-24, and a clinching win there, just not allowing a pin by Janook. I mean, I, I don't think we could get a better ending if we tried to make it up. Yeah, no, I mean, this is definitely something incredible to really see. I mean, who would have ever thought it would have came down to the seven and eight seeds? I don't think anybody would have ever saw that. But Wayne Valley came out on top. They won this, and they won a fair and square. They won it for a reason. They were the best team in this section. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to Coach Schroeder and his coaching staff and the rest of the team as well for doing such a great job tonight covering this matchup here with what looked like was going to be a scare. Absolutely, and I don't think anyone was expecting, especially that halfway point, I thought it was over. I was looking at the clock. I was like, all right, where are we getting dinner after this? Like, I thought it was going to be a blowout like I was at covering the other week, but I mean, what a comeback from Montville. If that doesn't say something about Montville's future and their program, I don't know what does. I'm very excited to see them individually coming up in a few weeks. But, I mean, what a match. I hope you guys enjoyed it. On the call with me is James Clark. I'm your host, Shane Dunn. Go to our website later to see all of the results from all around the state and to see all the PowerPoints and everything. All the results will be there. We don't know them at the time, obviously. But Wayne Valley is your sectional champions for the 2024 season, the first time in a decade. And it's been a pleasure. We are Garden State HS Wrestling, the original provider of great wrestling in the Garden State. Everyone have a great rest of your night. Shane Dunn with James Clark. Have a good one.